is manned by more than 50,000 military and civilian personnel. And uh, we've been discussing uh, how news of victories against the Taliban uh, is changing the perception of the military operation there. But there's also been considerable loss of life over the last two weeks. Nine British soldiers have died, uh, and that's brought the total number of British fatalities uh, to 106 since 2001, most of them in recent years. Well, let's continue now with our discussion. Colonel David Lamb is joining us uh, from Washington. Andrew Mitchell, MP, is here, as is Ajmal Khan Zazai. Uh, David Lamb, since you were there, in a sense, the... Uh, military task has got harder, the fighting uh, has got harder. Did, did that take you by surprise? Um, no, it did not. As a, a matter of fact, uh, some of us had uh, uh, tended to predict this, this sort of arrangement. Um, one of the things to keep in mind uh, when it comes to the fighting, particularly in the South, is, is that the Taliban for the longest time uh, while we were there in the 18 months that I was there had, had always uh, stated that the, the Americans were, were going to uh, leave them and until the return here recently of 3,200 Marines in fact Americans did, did leave the South and I, I think for many uh, Afghans uh, that was a perplexing uh, dilemma for them. Southern Afghanistan and Afghanistan in general is, is always and has always been a very, very dangerous and a precarious place to do business. And uh, the, the Taliban, uh, given the situation in Pakistan, the fluidity of that border, the porosity of that border, uh, have, have always, uh, always made the uh, resurgence of the Taliban uh, uh, probably not inevitable. But, uh, but a sanctuary in Pakistan from which they could do that. And, and working the Taliban issue in and of itself becomes very problematic because, as, as everybody knows, uh, the Taliban are, in fact, Afghans. Uh, so they're, they're not so easy to sort out. Uh, they can be your friends someday. They, they can be in the villages others, and they can be shooting at you in the evening. Um, and and what, what, we, what we need to do, and I think what, uh, what we have to press on, is, is getting some real unity of effort from the military side in Afghanistan. Uh, a, a good colleague of mine, General McKiernan, has recently taken over as the ISAF commander. But uh, the, 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 the command structure in which he operates is, is, uh, is, is, is very convoluted, it's, uh, and it's very difficult to work. He's working back up through a NATO structure, which is bureaucratic. It becomes political at the top. And he's trying to work a very bureaucratic structure against a very yep. agile enemy that can change directions and tempo on a yep. daily basis, uh, and, and his Mitchell, headquarters did, did, cannot. If this operation is to reach a successful conclusion, do we need to change what is a pretty bureaucratic system with each country's troops having different rules of engagement, different areas of operation? Well, the first thing I would do if I was Gordon Brown is to dispatch Lord Malik Brown to all the other NATO capitals, apart from Washington and Ottawa, to make the point that being a member of NATO means that they should be pulling their weight more effectively in Afghanistan. I think there's a quite an important role on burden sharing, which the colonel uh, referred to, to be conducted. But otherwise, uh, I think that the current PRT structure, which is being set up with, with different countries mm. being responsible and involved in those different provinces, is a good way of doing it. I think there's a problem yeah. caused by the fact that that the inevitably the tours, particularly the tours of senior mm. commanders, are quite short. And uh, we pay a, a small price for that as well, I think. Chief Sasa, do you see a military solution against what has become a civilian-based insurgency, as far as we can tell, with the use of uh, roadside devices and suicide bombings to such uh, tragic effect? I'm not going to argue with, uh, with Colonel. I think on the military side, he's right. But if you look into the Afghan solutions, sending more troops is not the answer. Having a, that's, that's, that's extremely important to have a unifying military operations there from the coalition. But to have the solutions and using the force in Afghanistan, it usually doesn't work. Okay. What we need is the contributions from the people of Afghanistan. Yeah. What I'm saying, the people, the tribes, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, is before. it possible that people are talking about an Afghan army 80,000 strong, I mean, is, is that remotely conceivable as an achievement? Well, it's not enough to, to control the whole country. And if, when you have an insurgency in the south and then you, you send them all there, what are you going to do in the north and what are you going to do in the east? 
So what we need, that's what exactly, I mean, 70 or 80,000 or 100,000 army will not be enough for Afghanistan in order to control Afghanistan. But in order to have people on board, I think that's going to be a big contribution right. from the people. And Richard, your final thought? I mean, that, that, the point about building the Afghan army, this is, that is one of the areas where we have had some success. And, and I agree with the chief that we have to go further than the 50,000. But there's no doubt at all that building the Afghan army so that the NATO armies can uh, take a back seat and train and give some logistic support increasingly, that must be the trend. Colonel, if there was one thing militarily that you would do to improve the situation, what would it be? Uh, the, the one thing I would do is uh, take a close look at the, uh, the, the chain of command and, and what is needed. This, this is correct. It is not a military solution here. It's about the counterinsurgency is about 20 percent military and 80 percent other forms of national power. And what we need to do, we have someone in charge of the military and we can fix that command structure. But there is no overall arching campaign plan for the other 80 percent of the work that needs to be done in Afghanistan, reconstruction, uh, alternate okay. livelihood programs that can work against the counter narcotics program. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. Security. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of our special program on Afghanistan for Queen and Country, The Longest War. And over the last hour, we've discussed Britain's role, the reconstruction, what Afghanistan needs, and how long NATO forces are likely to be involved. The Foreign Office Minister, Lord Malik Brown, told us the purpose of Britain's mission was clear and just. But he admitted that there had been missed opportunities. He said, if we haven't turned the corner within a few years, then we would have lost. Lord Ashdown told us the international mission is in difficulty and close to failing because it doesn't have a proper strategy. Well, pretty grim conclusions there, but I'd like to thank all our guests for joining us this evening and do stay with Sky News for the news and continuing Queen and Country. Those grainy old men.